Welcome back to the channel, and you're about to watch a video of me servicing my Fiat 500e before I do my 1200 mile round trip of the UK. And I'm at home at the moment just editing that video, and there's a rather unexpected twist to it. So you'll see me service the car, but what you won't see is me doing perhaps the most important bit of an EV service, which is making sure the brakes are free and properly lubricated in the places where they need to be lubricated. So any drag from the brakes can affect the range and that's going to be important when I do 1200 miles. So off camera I took the brakes apart and uh, you'll see at the end of the video what I find. Um, but uh, watch the video and then you'll come back to me here and find out what I found out. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my workshop and behind me I have my Fiat 500e um, which I'm going to travel all around the UK 1200 miles in next week for my holiday. So I thought I'd uh, make this video because I want to show um, basically what is involved in servicing an electric car and along the way I'm also going to show some of the integral components of the car um, and really show you how it's not that different to any other small front wheel drive car um, and not really that different to the normal 500. So I'm, I'm going to go through the checks that I can I do and what there is to service on an electric car. The answer is not very much but um, we can still check it over and I genuinely want to do this check over before I go away because um, you know I could find something major wrong with the car um, that would cause a breakdown. So I don't want a breakdown, I want the journey to go as smoothly as possible. So I genuinely, genuinely am checking it over. So we'll have a look first of all in the engine bay or the motor bay. So here we have the motor bay and this is the inverter and it's also the charger and it's also the DC-DC converter on the 500E. It's a really neat setup. But the things I'm checking for on here are just to check that all the, the cables are properly secured and there's no corrosion or anything like that. Um, so this takes the, the, the voltage in from the, uh, from the traction battery and it inverts it um, to power the motor, which is underneath here. It also charges the battery. This is the mains in the, the uh, three phase um, 400 volt or 230 volt single phase input from either your house or a on street charger. Um, and really this is actually the charger, it can charge the, the traction battery at up to 11 um, kilowatts. I want to check that the coolant level is fine, it's right up here to the max. This coolant uh, does a, a several things in the car, actually it cools the inverter, it cools the motor, and there's a separate circuit that also heats and cools the traction battery. And that's just to ensure the health of the battery and that it charges really quickly. Some cars, like well actually I think it's just the Nissan Leaf have an uncooled battery. And the problem with that is you can overheat the battery if you charge it too quickly. And it also, you can really get reduced range when it gets too cold. This car has a heater and uh, has air conditioning for the battery. Right down here at the front of the engine bay, we have the, uh, the fan. I'm just going to check that it's operating correctly. It's spinning nice and freely. Um, I'm not worried about the concentration of the coolant because um, this is a new car, I've never topped it up or anything. Um, so that should be fine from the factory. Uh, check the, the wiper blades so that they're not torn or split or anything like that. Um, now, by the way, I do have a, a full surface schedule on my computer, um, which uh, I, I'm afraid I can't really show you because it's copyrighted. Um, but it's, it's up until the service schedule is no parts up until two years in which case you have to change brake fluid after two years i can check the brake fluid level yep we have brake fluid that's fine it takes normal brake fluid it takes normal coolant i have noticed that this cap is actually locked uh, it says not to open it um, although up here it says it, uh, it just takes normal antifreeze now some electric cars have two coolants one for the battery and one for the the motor and inverter, this one doesn't. I'll top up the, the uh, screen wash here. That's very important that you use the best quality screen wash you can um, because in, in winter it can freeze and cause damage and it's, you've got to use screen wash to protect against Legionella disease. The one thing I hate about this car is it's got a tiny screen wash reservoir. It only takes a litre or so. 
don't know whether that's something they're going to address whether I've got the wrong part fitted but anyway it is small so that really is the only surface uh, fluids that you should ever have to top up is the screen wash the brake fluid you should never have to top up it should change it every two years the coolant I don't think has a change interval and if you have to top that up you've got a problem a leak uh, just check the high voltage uh, sorry the, <laughs> the low voltage battery the 12 volt battery you can see that's uh, got a good result this is just a normal uh, 12 volt battery so everything under here is uh, is looking really good so I can uh, with the help of a, an assistant I would uh, check the lights uh, check the actual operation of the wipers I can do that myself okay so I've got the ramp at half height and I'm going to check the brakes are operating smoothly and there's no no particular rust. These are starting to pit these discs because they get very little if almost you can see there's almost no brake dust. It's more rust if anything. Um, so just check the condition of these to condition the pads. I am if I get time and I won't show this on video because it's really messy but I am going to take the pads out very gently and just put a tiny bit of grease in the sliders just to make sure that they don't sleep, seize up because these are it's a sliding uh, caliper and the pads have to move freely otherwise you get brake drag. Well, see, one of the changes on the 500E um, is that these pads are sprung and that means that they, they have the tendency to withdraw from the disc slightly to reduce rolling resistance. You're coming in here and checking that the boots are not split, not any play in the bearings or any of these joints. The rubbers here are in good condition. The, sieve, the uh, inner track rod gator isn't split. The anti-roll bar drop link gators are not split. That The inner CV boot is not split. Uh, that the spring is correctly seated. And I'm just going to check that there's no damage to the spring or the bump stop or the, or the gator here. And that all seems fine. The front suspension and rear suspension is completely conventional, exactly the same as any other small Fiat. Um, even got the same shock absorbers and stuff as the normal 500. The brakes are a little bit different here on the back. We've got drums because they're much lower maintenance than discs. And it's got the uh, same drum brake electronic actuator as a, the VW ID platforms, which also run rear drums. So I think this is very similar to an ID rear end. It's got these rather funky looking drums, I like them. So yeah, just check that there's no no drag going on there. And they're really working rather lovely actually. There's no no resistance at all. Um, so just again check that the shock absorbers are not leaking, that the bump stops are correct, the springs are not broken. Um, check that this is all correctly attached, there's no damage there. Again the same thing on the other side. A little bit of drag there, you see, so. You see that? Might not seem like much, but that's enough. Just enough to. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna take these jumps off. Again, I probably won't film it, but I'm just gonna clean everything up in there. It's on 11,000 miles, this car and they don't really lube these things from the factory everything's exactly the same but mirrored on the other side so not really a huge amount to see here but it's just again check that uh, all these wires and hoses and gaiters and clips and boots and all of that are in good condition which they are one of the interesting things here is the pedestrian sound generator that's what plays the tune and the warning noise Let's have a look underneath the car and again I'm just going to check that all these uh, wires are, are correctly clipped in and all of that, that the inner CV uh, joint gaiters are not split, uh, steering racks all secure, everything seems fine and checking for coolant leaks particularly. Um, you've got the coolant connections here to the battery, the high voltage supply from the battery to the inverter and uh, you can see that the underpinnings of this car are very similar to the uh, combustion engine 500. In fact, it shares the subframe with the combustion engine. You've got the air conditioning compressor up here. It's an electric compressor, funnily enough. And you can see how the motor works here. This is the motor casing, and then the final drive in here, and the differential. One of the interesting features of an electric car is that the differential here is dead center 
And that's to eliminate any torques there, because obviously an electric motor has significant availability of torque. And if there's any torque steer whatsoever, you'd really feel it snatch the wheel. I can tell you what, this car has no torque steer at all. It's fantastic. You can put your foot down and it just goes. So really, the only other thing to check is the condition of the high voltage battery. And uh, there are no scratches or dents or anything like that. And this one's in perfect condition, fortunately. And again, coming around here at the back, very important to check these high voltage cables here are in good condition and the brake lines are in good condition, which they are. So I think the, the main thing is just a, a visual inspection on an electric car because that really conducts, um, is the end of the, the sort of visual part of it. Um, you'd also plug the car in, uh, clear the, uh, reset the service light, etc. But the, you know, the best thing you can do is to, is to take the brakes apart and clean them, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to get very dirty doing that. But uh, I hope that gives you an idea of what's, uh, what's involved with an EV. There are actually far fewer parts, but there's certainly not no parts at all. There's a reduction in parts, but it's not like there's just nothing to go wrong. Okay, so cut back to the studio. And in that video that you just uh, watched, you'll notice that one of the brakes, the rear left-hand brake, the passenger side brake, the near side rear drum brake was slightly tight when I rotated it. Now I wasn't actually going to touch the drums, I was just going to uh, service the, uh, the, fr the front pads, just put a little bit of anti-seize uh, grease and clean, clean up some of the brake, disc, uh, brake dust. But I noticed that rear left drum was slightly binding and I thought that was a bit weird. So I took both drums off and the rear right was completely fine, I just uh, cleaned out the brake dust, no trouble at all, put that back on. The rear left, when I took it off, I found that there was some grease contamination and uh, I sort of initially thought that was normal but then when I looked at it I realised that the rear wheel bearing was leaking. Now I don't know why this is uh, but I do have a suspicion that perhaps uh, the rear hub nut was slightly loose. Now it's a, a self-locking nut but if it wasn't correctly torqued then grease might have been able to travel out of the bearing and down the shaft, the, the stub axle, and contaminate the, uh, the rear brakes. So just goes to show what an important thing surfacing is, because this is not an EV related issue. Um, this is a conventional um, car issue. Um, the rear, rear wheel bearing is exactly the same as a lot of Fiat's, including the petrol 500. And uh, yeah, if I hadn't have taken the drum off, I wouldn't have spotted it. But it really is quite a lot of grease and it was getting to the point where it was starting to contaminate the drum. I think I caught it just in time. Now, as I'm going away, I bought a brand new uh, bearing uh, cap and nut from Fiat Genuine Parts. Uh, it's about sort of 100 quid or so. Uh, now, I probably could have claimed under warranty. I, I will try and mention this just as a sort of quality control thing. But uh, obviously I wouldn't have had time to go to the dealer and, and get it done under warranty before going away. So I'm going away on Monday. Um, I picked up the problem on Thursday. So yeah, Thursday, time enough for me to do it Friday and, and get the bearing on. I didn't get any video of it because I was in a bit of a rush. I, mean, I think you can see from these photos um, what a state it was in there. And perhaps after 1200 miles, it might have got a bit worse. So I think it really proves my point that servicing is important. I'm glad I looked over the car and found this problem, um, which is funnily enough, uh, just one of those things. I mean, I think it's I think it's something not the manufacturer of the bearing. I don't really think that's the problem. I think something in the assembly has caused grease to to come out. As I say, the other side was completely fine. Um, but yeah, next video hopefully will be me uh, setting off on Monday, so tune in for that and see you then.